So this turbine, it's approaching the end of its build actually. Now obviously I've rebuilt it from the original one because of all that I learnt from it. But the costs involved in building this particular version are really just minuscule. I mean, I paid for the magnets and I paid, I think it was about £20 for 50 of them, something like that. I paid for the bearings, which were uh, three or four pounds. And the coils, remember, were donated. Thank you very much, guys, for all the donations, actually. And on each coil, working with what we worked before, we got a tiny bridge rectifier. These bridge rectifiers were a pound for 10. So I paid 10 pounds for each of those, and there are 38 of them. So three pounds 80. So if we add that up and put in a bit of leeway for things like welding rods and that sort of stuff, we're probably talking about no more than 50 pounds to build this entire thing. That's pretty awesome. Now the amount of energy that this can actually generate is fixed. It's fixed by its size. Uh, I'll check the size, but I think it is 48 centimetres tall by, uh, what was it, 58 centimetres in diameter. So you can always calculate what the um, maximum output of that is going to be at any particular wind speed if you want. It is, of course, going to be governed by the Betts law. So what is that? 59.3% uh, of the available wind power can be taken out at maximum. That'll give you an idea of that if this was 100% efficient, what kind of energy something like this can generate. Now, we can get more out of it if we put more coils on, but we can't get more than the maximum that it's going to be able to generate. Now, with these coils, what I've done is I've arranged them in a little arc in four segments, as you can see here, and I've connected them all up, and they're connected in parallel, but each one comes through its own bridge rectifier. There are four segments that go on the bottom, like that, and then we put a screw in there to hold those together. Okay, so there's the basics of it finished. Now, I was going to take it out in the um, fresh air, but it's absolutely chucking it down and I don't fancy getting that wet and cold. So what I've done is I've put a blower on it. And I've put a blower on it just so that you can see it spin, really, and listen to it spin. That is really ultra quiet, okay? The only noise you can hear, in fact, is the blower noise. Now, I've connected those um, output coils to a couple of capacitors. They're... Um, microwave oven capacitors because that's what I've got they were denoted along with all the other microwave oven parts that lots of this is made from and here you can see a diode on the positive that's a blocking diode and that means is all of this energy is getting dumped into this capacitor and this capacitor then can dump it into this battery here and when this is not running or it runs below then it can't go the other way so we're blocking it from returning and all we're doing is charging the battery now I'm measuring the battery voltage it's uh, 12.046, 046. And what we're going to do is leave that to run and watch that battery charge voltage go up. Now, to my mind, that's an accurate measure of what these things can do. It's extremely rare for you to put a uh, wind turbine directly to a load. It's really much more common to put it to some kind of storage and then run the load from the storage. So what we really want to know is, how long does it take to charge up this battery? And how long, how much will this battery hold? Now obviously I want to do that over an entire day. So what I want to do is discharge the battery, set this up, leave it running, come back and find out how much charge is on that battery so that I can see how much that has actually generated and put into my store for me, which I can then really use. So to me that emulates more of a real world condition. Of course, it doesn't give you an instant answer, which is a bit unfortunate, but it does emulate the real-world condition in which this thing is going to operate. So the next test of this really is to set up on my roof and connect a discharged battery and leave it until that battery is charged and we'll see what it actually does. Now, I did go to the trouble of calculating what the possible output given wind speeds of this thing was. Then I adjusted it for the BETS coefficient and I made a graph of it. And here's the graph. Now from that graph you can obviously see the upscale as wind speed increases and when it gets to about 22 miles an hour or something, which is quite a wind speed, this thing is supposed to be able to generate at uh, about 1.2 kilowatts I think. Now it's not going to do that, okay, because there are inefficiencies in here that will bring that down. I don't know what it's going to bring it down to, but we can assume that it will bring it down. But theoretically, it has the possibility of a kilowatt hour, a kilowatt generator in a 22, mile, uh, 22 meter per second wind. As I say, 
And putting it on the blower inside because it's raining and cold is hardly ideal, so let's get it outside on the next test. But that is the basic idea complete, and I'm really enjoying that actually because it is really charging a battery. What it's actually outputting, we don't know, okay? But can it output something and hold and store that charge? Categorically, yes it can. Hopefully we can answer that next question when we put it in a real world condition. That is, get it on the roof, get that battery charging and see how long it takes to charge. Okay, we're at um, 1.204748. So over that period of the video, it's gone up a few hundredths of a volt. Anyway, I thought I would um, show you that. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.